All right, so hey everyone, for this video I'm going to be going over um, some of the aiming in Overwatch. Uh, so the dead zones and some of the aiming types. Uh, I should actually start out on dual zone because that's the default. Um, one thing to note is I'm on PC right now, so I can show the uh, this stick input in the uh, this dead zone overlay. Um, the main difference between the versions, the PC and the console versions, is the dead zone size. The dead zone is 26% about on PC, but it's 16% on console. Uh, it's a strange difference, but that's just something that's important to note. Um, with uh, dead zone settings supposedly coming, this, this difference won't matter since you'll be able to customize it. But um, kind of the main thing I want to show in this video is just that dead zone options are really the only thing left uh, for Overwatch to address. Everything else is actually good and I'll explain why in a little bit. But it's just starting with the dead zones for um, and starting with specifically dual zones. Uh, on PC it's 26% so you can see I have to move my stick 26% before you see any cursor movement start occurring and it's a nice circular dead zone so this happens consistently all the way around but 26% is a huge dead zone so it's I mean just a smidge over the kind of average on console um, but as you can see there's tons of stick movement that I can make without seeing anything in game and even though 16% is a lot better on console it's still a large dead zone so I mean players should be using 10% or 5% or something like that to get really nice responsive feeling controls like this is, on PC it's especially bad because I mean trying to make precise adjustments but you have to like make these large movements just to see some small adjustments being made however you see this shaded ring I have here this is specifically for dual zone and this just marks the acceleration threshold so this is also a nice circular um, ring around the edge and this is consistent with all the aiming types I'm not going to change the overlay because I'm lazy but the dead zone works for all of them exponential ramp starts a lot slower so it's a little hard to see um, like um, movement exactly at the dead zone so I'm pushing a little beyond it but it does happen at the same distance um, for it, uh, for exponential and linear, this, I don't know, uh, there's no acceleration jump, but I'm not sure if this region represents like an outer dead zone, like if anything past this is just 100% or considered 100%. But getting on the linear just to finish this off. Ooh, I might get kicked. Pretend that I'm doing something. Oops. Ooh, okay. See, so, alright, so linear. Boop. Yeah, it's all 26%. And this the same is true on console, just with a 16% dead zone. So dead zone option should be added. That's really all this is um, getting at. Um, the current dead zone is just too large. And uh, with dead zone settings, we'll see that fixed right quick. All right, so getting on to some of the other aiming techniques. Uh, we started the, it out with uh, exponential, which uh, starts out slow. Whoops, nope. Oh man, I'm doing all sorts of wrong stuff. Okay, so we started out with exponential and aim smoothing. I have aim smoothing disabled for this since it's an option, and it kind of masks some of the differences in these options. But the important thing about exponential is it starts out very slow. Uh, this represents an acceleration curve and then builds up to the same max speed. Uh, we've pretty much known this since it's beta, since this was the original option, just with uh, aim smoothing there. The next one was dual zone that they added as a response to problems with exponential, which was mainly issues with the smoothing. This is actually a linear curve that builds up until it hits this jump. So this whole part is linear. And they've recently, well not recently at this point, but we've seen linear ramp added. 
there's been a lot of complaints about uh, linear ramp, but there's actually nothing wrong with it. Uh, you see people are complaining that it starts this fast and then builds up to the maximum speed. This is how linear curves work. Um, when you hear that if you move 1% past the dead zone, you get 1% of your total speed, well, this is 1% of your total speed. This is what a linear curve is. Uh, exponential starts slower because it's a not non-linear curve. Uh, so when you say, like, we want a linear curve because so it feels like games like Call of Duty or Battlefield or Halo, um, those games don't use linear curves. Uh, Call of Duty uses a non-linear curve, and if um, what the developers mentioned for Overwatch, exponential ramp uses basically what Call of Duty's curve is. Um, linear curves aren't normally used because they, they start fast. They don't really preserve um, precision at faster sensitivities, as you can kind of see, like small adjustments are still very, very uh, large movements. So there's nothing wrong with linear. That's just really want to want to point out. This is how a linear curve works. It starts out. Um, so if I press 50% of the way, this is 50% of my total speed. This is maybe about 10% of my total speed. This is 1% of my total speed. So um, there's nothing wrong with linear ramp. This is exactly what a linear curve is. And that's really want to want to show because. Exponential ramp. Uh, the developers have mentioned that this roughly equates to uh, um, x to the 2.2 .2 curve, where a linear is an x to the uh, x to the one. So you can see there's a huge difference. This curve is when it starts out is over like a thousand times more precise than linear, and that's just the way it is. That's that's what a non-linear curve does, and that's why many games use these kind of curves because you can play at fast sensitivities and still be able to make kind of pixel perfect adjustments pretty easily. I mean the dead zone's making this difficult, but um, that's what I want to describe as far as this um, these different aiming styles. Like uh, dual zone works because it's a linear curve but the actual curve is very slow and then the, the jump is kind of what makes your fast turning possible. Alright, so I want to talk about the aim ease function. Uh, right now I have it set at zero with a linear ramp. So as you can kind of see, it starts out um, well, as a linear curve, so it starts out pretty fast and builds up linearly to its maximum turn rate. What linear ramp, or no, I mean, what aim ease does is control the exponent of a power function. So a linear curve is x to the 1. What this aim-ease range is for a linear for the li linear ramp aim technique changes this for, if it's 0 it's x to the 1 and according to the developers anyway when it's maxed out it's x to the 5 which which really all you should take from is it starts out how or alters how fast your acceleration starts. So as you can see right here your acceleration starts out very slow when this is when this option is maxed and then builds up following an x to the 5 curve so you f it still hits the same cap but it starts out very slow and then builds up at the end faster to reach that and of course any value in between you can in get so this might be maybe x to 3 I'm not sure exactly how it, how it scales I'm not going to do the math, but you can see that it starts out a little faster, but it's still slower than a linear curve and builds up to the same maximum speed. For those of you that have played Titanfall 2, this is basically exactly what the response curve option does, except Overwatch has a wider range going from 1 to uh, going from 1 to 5 rather than Titanfall 2's which goes to about 1 to about 3. But that's really what this option does, is it controls your, you can just think of it as controlling what the initial acceleration looks like. So if I set it to 20, it starts out faster, but it's still not linear, so you can still make precise adjustments easier, just with the, you know, the dead zone makes it a little 
harder to do that. But yeah, I've heard a lot of uh, people complaining about this option, but this option works basically exactly like intended. Uh, there's uh, no issues with this option as far as I can see at all. Um, the only thing that I think is kind of redundant is with um, this, I have linear ramp on right now, and with an Amy's option of maybe, let's say if about 40 to 50, you're basically recreating, uh, you can basically recreate exponential ramp with linear uh, linear ramp and these options, which to me feels like uh, um, it kind of defeats the purpose of still having exponential at this point. Uh, dual zone is also linear, so it'll change in the same way, but it's generally a slower sensitivity with this ramp up speed. So uh, the curve will just change in between this section and then the ramp up will still stay, stay the same. For exponential ramp, this basically starts out Oops, that. Um, basically the zero value still starts out at exponential, so about x to the 2.2, just approximately, and then builds up to its maximum. And But when you increase it, it just becomes more precise than that. Uh, but basically you can, uh, I would just suggest using linear ramp and then customizing this to get your precision because uh, um, it's kind of like, yeah, you see just how overly precise this is. I'm moving like 30% and I'm making, you can make pretty much pixel adjustments with this acceleration. But yeah, so this option just controls how your low-end sensitivity starts. That's, that's all this option does. And it works exactly as intended. Um, so yeah, there's really nothing to complain about. All right, so I want to finish up just showing this interactive graph. Uh, here we can see the console version of the dead zone. So this is 16% rather than the 26% dead zone you've seen for the rest of the video. Uh, with the dead zone option, we can change this and most importantly, uh, lower it. So as you can see here, it would take very little stick movement to break out of the dead zone and start seeing acceleration. This would make the controls feel a lot more responsive and make it much easier to make precise movements and as you can see the acceleration curves change or scale with this so I mean they, they start at zero past the dead zone. One thing I want to note that I mentioned earlier is I'm not sure if the uh, dual zone acceleration jump threshold counts as the outer dead zone for these aiming styles uh, so basically how I have it set that it does so as you can see here this goes to about 92% or 92% and it caps off so 92% stick movement gives you 100% um, of your acceleration uh, it might be 100% so you have to move your stick 100% to see 100% acceleration uh, I'm not sure but I'm just assuming this because I can't tell there's no clear distinction but importantly, here's the Amy's slider. So we have a linear ramp, nice linear function. And this brings it to an X to the five once it's at the equivalent of 100 in game. And you can just see how much more precise it is. You have to move basically 65% of the way to see 10% of your total acceleration. So that's uh, extremely precise. And of course you get everything in between. Exponential ramp's a little weird because it starts at a high, uh, higher degree, so they've approximated it as x to the 2.2, so that's what this looks like. And I've noticed that when maxed out, exponential ramp still feels a little more precise, so I've just had it basically add on to it. So this one's, a, uh, uh, the way I have it set up is it's more x to the 6.2 maybe, this is x to the 5, so it's a little more precise, but that's just approximately how it works. And as you might notice here, I feel like with Amy's there's really no point to having linear ramp or exponential ramp because linear ramp uh, with this slider can pass through exponential ramps uh, approximate value. So you can see here this is basically exponential ramps default. 
So exponential ramp seems a little redundant. And of course, you can go way more precise. And I mean, once you get into like the pass of threes, you're getting really precise. Um, but this is just me nitpicking. Uh, having both these options doesn't really uh, hurt anything. It's just I feel a little bloated. But nope. Uh, so um, Amy's is an extremely powerful option. Um, hopefully, uh, this video's kind of showed showed that. But uh, really, all we need is dead zone options. Um, once we have those, uh, Overwatch will be um, basically smooth as silk. But that about covers it. Um, any any of these images, gra this graph, or anything else will be linked in the description for you to see or mess around with. Um, so yeah, hopefully this video has been informative, and thanks for watching.